Benzives, D, all of the above. Ruminants chew food, A, using premolars and molars, B, on one side of the jaw and then on the other, C, that has already been swallowed and brought back up through the esophagus, D, all of the above. On average, how much time per day do ruminants spend grazing? A, six hours, B, eight hours, C, 10 hours, D, four hours. Now let's take an internal look at the structures of the reticulum and the rumen. And the gas is escaping now. I'm going to come right along in through here and make a cut, which is going to be right on the side of the rumen. And what we're going to see is the contents of what the animal consumed and the internal structures associated with the, with the rumen. If I peel this back, there's several things you can see. Um, first, the material that the animal has consumed is very liquid. Uh, in the rumen, it's going to be a fairly liquid environment uh, with material that uh, is floating on the top is going to be a little bit drier. The other thing to notice is as we look at the ventral portion of the rumen, or the lower portion of the rumen, which is in my hand right here, it has many projectiles or papillae for absorbing the material that's digested. This area is filled with bacteria. This is what the animal has consumed. We have examples there of a kernel of corn. There's some cottonseed hulls in here, some long forage that uh, you can see here. But that's all of the material that the animal has consumed um, during the last 24 to 48 hours. Animals traditionally, when they're taken to slaughter, will be off feed for 24 hours. So this animal's digestive tract is not as full as it would be. The size of the rumen of an animal this side could be uh, up to 30 gallons. So a very large capacity for material. Remember, the ventral rumen is primarily liquids with some solid material, whereas the dorsal rumen is, uh, is more floating particulate matter um, and uh, not, as, not as high in uh, liquid content. And if we look at the, at the dorsal rumen, the amount of papillae in the dorsal rumen is much smaller. The dorsal compared to the ventral. Ventral is here, dorsal is there. We've laid out here our cleaned samples from the rumen. Uh, you should notice differences in the two samples. Um, one comes from the ventral portion or the, um, the part toward the belly of the animal. It has much more papillae, of these projections that are coming out, compared to the dorsal rumen, which is shown here, which goes from smooth to just uh, a few papillae that are projecting from the rumen wall. The ventral area is going to have much uh, higher water content compared to the dorsal, which will have floating material and less water associated with it. Greater number and size of papillae increases the surface area dramatically, and we get much more absorption from the ventral tract compared to the dorsal tract. In addition to holding consumed food, the rumen, in concert with the reticulum, rhythmically relaxes and contracts, causing the microbes and fluid to be thoroughly mixed with the feed undergoing digestion. Bacteria, or microbes that aid in digestion, are spread throughout the mixture. Remember that material coming from the esophagus comes into the reticulum and rumen. In fact, very heavy objects often will fall down into the reticulum. The reticulum is this area right here, and it's oftentimes called the honeycomb. And uh, as we open it up, we'll be able to see why. It has structures shaped like a honeycomb. If you look how thick that is, it's fairly thick, uh, allows the animal to harbor um, metallic objects and hold them there and uh, does not uh, cause a puncture in the digestive tract, whereas further down the tract the walls are much thinner and there could be a problem. So I'm going to cut right into the reticulum here. Again, there will probably be a little gas release as we do that and we'll open it up to take a look. As we open the reticulum, it would not be uncommon to find wire or nuts or bolts that the animal consumed that is contained there in this fairly thick walled structure. As you look at the structure, I think you can see why it's called the honeycomb. It has that natural occurring structure like that. Again, it's very, uh, very tough. Um, and again, the entry into the reticulum is uh, from the esophagus is occurring right up here. So all of this area right here is the reticulum. And we will cut up here uh, to look at that. Here is a cleaned sample from the reticulum. 
and you can see the, the basically honeycomb shaped material. This, uh, this uh, wall again is very thick um, and as I try and put my finger through it, it'd be impossible. It's very thick and that's what is going to hold uh, metal objects and other sharp things and dense materials in the reticulum. What I'm going to do now is uh, actually go down into the uh, reticulum, feel the material that's there. Generally the, the densest material is going to be here, uh, particles of grain, um, perhaps metal if there is any. There's a piece of rock or a hard material. Ruminants oftentimes have very unusual things because they're so uh, non-selective in their grazing and eating. It's not uncommon to find bale twine, uh, wire, uh, and other objects. This animal is a steer that was uh, about 13 months old. Generally, animals that are that young will not have metal in them uh, unless it's uh, been in a drought or something like that where they've been starved for feeding or eating most anything. In older cattle, oftentimes we will see lots of metal in that. In fact, in dairy cattle, oftentimes a, a magnet would be fed, which is about this long, which would be placed in the reticulum, just given orally, it drops down and stays in the reticulum, and in that way it holds the wire in place or the nails or staples that the animal consumed. And this magnet of this size is orally administered to the animal. It follows its way down the esophagus into the reticulum where it's, where it's housed by the animal. What I have here is a magnet that's been taken from an animal that uh, has had the magnet in it for about two years. As you can notice on this magnet, uh, this particular cow consumed a lot of material it shouldn't have. Here is a, a fairly large bolt. Uh, there's a, um, a washer. We also have part of a staple and some wire. As the animal consumed that material, it was collected associated with the magnet and that prevented it from being passed further down the tract where it could cause uh, other problems, puncturing the digestive tract and peritonitis resulting, or even puncturing through the reticulum wall uh, with a piece of wire. If it does puncture the wall of the reticulum, the heart is located right here. So we would have pretty much instantaneous death if we have a nail that goes through the reticulum and into the, uh, into the heart. So a magnet given to cattle can serve a very important purpose. As I cut, you can see the honeycomb nature of the whole reticulum, which is quite different than what we saw in the rumen. So we can see another structure that's important called the reticular groove, which is going to lie right here between the esophagus and the uh, omasum. There's almost like a little trough here that goes directly into an opening, which my finger is in, into the omasum and then into the true stomach. And it's very important for uh, young animals that are consuming milk in that the digestion is most efficient in the true stomach. This structure closes like this and the milk goes straight through and goes to the true stomach uh, which is the abomasum. So the reticular groove um, is quite important in, uh, in the young animal and even in older animals uh, that suckle oftentimes this structure will close and we can get medications and other things into the animal's lower tract and avoid being going into the rumen. Prepare for questions from section 3. The honeycomb refers to what structure? A. Rumen B. Reticulum C. Omasum D. Abomasum It is not uncommon to find what objects in the reticulum? A. Wire B. Bolts C. Nuts D. All of the above what is the normal capacity of a rumen and an 1,100 pound steer? A, 20 gallons. B, 60 gallons. C, 10 gallons. D, 30 gallons. In the rumen, which portion would have the most papillae? A, dorsal. B, ventral. C, anterior. D, Posterior. Why are magnets administered to cattle? A. To add weight. B. To catch wire and bolts. C. To help circulation. D. To speed digestion. Now let's take a look at the omasum, abomasum, and lower digestive tract. The material is going to enter from the reticulum and go in through the omasum and then into the abomasum. 
The omasum is oftentimes called the leaves of the Bible, and the reason will become apparent when I open it up. We will see that the structures are such as the pages of a book, and it's thought that that structure is there to prevent large particles from going further down the track and also for, uh, for the absorption of water. As I cut, we'll see the contents and also we'll see the leaves. Here's one of the leaves I'll cut through and peel it back. The contents of that is very, very fine particles. Notice they're very dry so that water absorption has occurred and if we feel this whole thing, it's very, very tough. We look down to the very bottom here and we talked about the reticular groove, we said the material would pass into the omasum. Here is the, here is the opening for the uh, reticular groove. And in a milk consuming animal, this would follow all the way through, come through the other side and enter right into the abomasum or the true stomach. You can see where my finger is pointing. In animals that are, that are consuming uh, uh, vegetable material such as this, it has the function of uh, of making sure large particles don't go down and also of uh, absorbing a lot of the water. You can see the, la the layers, I'll peel them across. There's one, there's two, there's three. If I cut more, there's four and five and so forth. So material is going through that. You can see the structure of this is with little protrusions. These protrusions are uh, fairly rough to the touch and presumed to hold larger particles uh, from going further down the tract and also to slow the rate at which material passes so that water absorption through the tissues can occur. This is a clean portion from the omasum. You can see the sections that occurred. Of course, this was uh, completely filled with, uh, with digestive content. You can still see a few, few pieces there. But there are several leaves that the material would have to go through. And you can see how this would be a restriction to, uh, to exit and also that water absorption can can take place to a large extent in, this, in these structures. Should be able to notice the, uh, the white uh, projectile type um, structures here and uh, those do decrease the rate at which material passes through the omasum and increase the length of time that material is there so we have more water absorption that would occur. The ruminant contains four different compartments uh, to the digestive tract before the stomach, including the stomach. We've already talked about the rumen, talked about the reticulum, the omasum, and then after it enters, exits the omasum, it enters into the abomasum, which is called the true stomach, which is very similar to stomachs of monogastrics, uh, humans, pigs, and so forth. And really from the stomach to the rest of the tract uh, is very similar among all livestock uh, with some minor differences. The contents of, uh, of, the, of the true stomach, uh, uh, have most of those have escaped. Of course, it's been off a of feed. Uh, it's not unusual to find even large particles like this piece of corn that's come through. In fact, if you look at the feces of cattle that are fed whole shell corn, you'll find uh, corn that makes it all the way through the digestive tract without being completely digested. The folds in here you can see are a uh, are normal part of the, uh, of the abomasum. This is a cleaned portion of the abomasum or true stomach. Um, it does show the folds that occur in the stomach. The abomasum extends all the way to the, to the end, which is right here where my thumb is, and that end has a, has a valve or a constriction called the pylorus. And the pylorus has the function of either tightly squeezing to keep contents in the abomasum or it will loosen. Uh, and allow material to pass on through and go into the small intestine. So it's the valve that uh, controls what's in the, in the stomach. And this region of the, uh, of the tract has, uh, has some of the contents. You can see some part large materials come through, um, some full pieces of grain. But the contents generally are going to be fairly liquid as they're in here, as they are in the lower tract, and we'll take a look at those. The part of the tissue that you can see is quite different here, especially in color, um, but the area that's at the anterior portion or the front of the abomasum secretes mucus. The posterior end secretes acids. We are now entering into the small intestine. 
marked difference between the upper portions of the tract. Uh, it's very smooth. There's no projections that we can, uh, we can see. Uh, the structure is also quite thin. In fact, I could put my finger through it um, fairly easily with, uh, with just putting pressure in it. So it is a much thinner than the upper portions of the tract.